Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we are going to start looking at uh, hypothesis testing uh, in this lecture. It is uh, easily one of the most important topics uh, that is covered in a statistics course. Uh, it has uh, different aspects to it and uh, some of these aspects are very precise, some of these aspects are very imprecise and loose and described at a high level. Uh, we will take uh, some sort of an uh, approach to it which is somewhere in between. Uh, we will motivate uh, some of the aspects and uh, write down some rules for how things are done uh, in hypothesis testing. So, let us get started. So, let us begin with an introduction. It is good to do an introduction with a very simple problem uh, which is easy to understand and it is uh, sort of like a standard beginning example for hypothesis testing, ok. So, here is the question. Uh, so, I have a coin with me and uh, I am trying to find out if it is authentic or counterfeit and there is this knowledge I have about the coin. If uh, the authentic coin is tossed, the probability of heads is going to be 0.5, ok. So, it is like a fair coin. While this counterfeit coin, I know ahead of time that the probability of heads is going to be 0.6. So, this is the information I have about the coin and uh, you have to uh, find out whether the coin you have is uh, authentic or counterfeit, ok. So, of course, you can cause, toss the coins uh, multiple times and observe the results, maybe not like too many times, but at least you can toss it and keep observing the results, that is possible. And uh, supposing you can do that, how will you conclude based on a few tosses or no, 10 tosses, 100 tosses, how many ever tosses you do and how many ever heads you got, how will you conclude whether the coin is authentic or counterfeit, ok. So, this is the central question uh, in this example and this it turns out is a very typical example of what a hypothesis testing problem is, ok. So, using samples uh, that are given to you, uh, you have to decide between a null hypothesis which you normally expect to be true, right which we will denote as H0 and an alternative hypothesis which we will denote HA and uh, the alternative hypothesis is what you are trying to establish some evidence for from the samples, ok. So, these two words will show up again and again and again get it uh, understood in some sense. Uh, there is always two hypotheses in some sense. Uh, there is definitely a null hypothesis which you are trying to verify but there could be an alternative hypothesis which may have happened uh, like in this case. If you, if you look at the coin toss, the null hypothesis is that the probability of heads is 0.5, the alternative hypothesis is probability of heads is 0 0.6. So, the null hypothesis is authentic and the alternative hypothesis is uh, the coin is counterfeit, ok. So, that is the, uh, that is the setting and uh, I mean this, this terminology so, sounds a little fancy for a simple problem like this, but you will see as we see more and more problems, uh, you can use this similar type of terminology uh, to put it into this framework, ok. So, like I said, it is easily one of the most important statistical analysis methods that is available. Uh, many, many questions in uh, about data are answered using uh, the hypothesis tests, ok. So, we have seen, we've seen the first basic definition, null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, uh, what else is there? How do you, how do you, how do you, what is the framework for a hypothesis test, ok. So, the central question is, given the samples, are you going to accept the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis, ok. So, this is your action, right. So, uh, your hypothesis test is there, the situation is there, uh, the null hypothesis is there, alternative hypothesis is there, you get your samples and now you have to decide. From the samples, you do something and come to a conclusion, either you accept the null or you reject the null, ok. Of course, you have to provide some evidence for why you are doing so, that is also necessary, but your central action is whether you accept the null or uh, reject the null, ok. So, let us look at this example. This example is something concrete, so we can really understand what is going on. Uh, supposing you toss the coin three times, right. So, I am picking three just as a number, it may or may, may not be a very good idea to toss it three times, maybe you want to toss, toss it 30 times, 300 times, whatever, but let us say three times, just conceptually to understand what happens. What are the possible outcomes that can happen if you toss three times? This is something that you know really, really well. There are eight possible outcomes, uh, head, head, heads, head, head, tails all the way till tail, tail, tails, ok. So, what will happen? Whatever test you may employ, whatever strategy you may employ, to decide to accept or reject, it will be based on these outcomes, right. Obviously, this, this you have done the sampling and there are outcomes and you will base it on the outcomes. For some of these outcomes, you will accept H0 and for some of these outcomes, you will reject H0, 
So that is going to be the general strategy, it is any strategy fits into this right, for some outcomes you accept uh, the null hypothesis, for some outcomes you reject the null hypothesis, okay. So I will make a set A which is the set of all outcomes for which you accept H0, okay, whatever may be your strategy, you saw the outcomes and finally ultimately for some outcomes you are going to accept the null, for some outcomes you are going to reject the null. So I am going to note down what are all the outcomes where you accepted the null and I am going to call that the set A, okay. So we can call it the acceptance set if you want or acceptance region in some sense, okay. Acceptance set is a common uh, terminology also, you can use it. So you can clearly see that every test, every test corresponds to an acceptance set and every acceptance set corresponds to a test, okay. So so, so anytime you want to design a test, you are actually designing an acceptance set, okay. So what are all the outcomes for which I am going to accept the null? What are all the outcomes for which I am going to reject the null? In fact, once you, once you decide the acceptance set, the rejection set is what? The complement of this, right. So, so that is also decided. So the acceptance set is central to the whole thing, okay. So any hypothesis test that you can possibly come up with will always have this acceptance set and you have to describe it properly, okay. So that is the problem. So let us make it a little bit more formal in general. So I will always talk of this acceptance set a little bit, we will we'll change it a little bit as we go along later but for now think of it as an acceptance set and the corresponding test that you have. So you have n IID samples according to some distribution and you have two hypotheses about the distribution, H0 is one hypothesis which we call the null hypothesis which generally we normally expect to be true and then HA is the alternative hypothesis, once again some hypothesis or some uh, notion or idea about the distribution of x, okay. So, so let us say that your uh, random variable x belongs to an alphabet script x, okay. So then your samples, the n samples will belong to script x raised to the power n, right, the Cartesian product of script x, n values from the alphabet you will have in your samples. So any subset A of these script x raised to the power n is a hypothesis test, the same thing as we did for the coin toss experiment, right? any subset of outcomes becomes a uh, hypothesis test and that uh, subset is what we will call as the acceptance set, okay. If the samples end up belonging to this subset, then we will accept the null hypothesis, otherwise we will reject the null hypothesis, okay. So of course the whole story is about how do you choose this A, right, that is the, that's the big uh, method in hypothesis testing, isn't it, how do you choose? this A, okay. So for that we need to understand some metrics, okay. So far I just described the hypothesis test, what is a good hypothesis test? How do you, uh, you know, quantify the results of a hypothesis test? This is very important, isn't it? So, so we are going to see some very simple and uh, easy ways to define metrics, okay. So let us go back once again to this coin toss, uh, coin authentic or counterfeit uh, uh, problem. Uh, so we toss the coin three times there are 8 outcomes and when you put out these 8 outcomes and when you want to look for a subset of these outcomes for your acceptance set, there are 256 possible subsets, okay. So for this problem if you choose to do only 3 tosses, there are 256 possible tests, right. Supposing you choose to do 300 tosses, then there are 2 power 300 possible tests, okay. So the number of tests you can see are blowing up with the number of samples. This is just for the coin toss experiment, supposing your samples were normal samples, right, so that they, let's say they are from the normal distribution, then you actually have continuous values and your samples are huge in space and uh, finding a subset of that seems like a non-trivial problem and there are infinitely many such subsets in a general case. So basically the story is there are many, 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 many tests, okay, so every subset, there are many, 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 many subsets for the outcomes of your samples and there are many, 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 many tests, okay. How do you pick which is good? For this you need metrics. There are two metrics that are very, very popular and they are often used. One metric is called the significance level, it is also called the size of a test uh, but in most of these, this class at least we will use significance level, it is usually denoted alpha, okay. So the first metric is significance level of the test denoted alpha. Now how do you measure alpha? Uh, so there is one type of error associated with hypothesis testing, in fact there are two types of errors. The first type of error is the null hypothesis is actually true 
but you ended up rejecting the null as a result of your, uh, you know, your procedure for hypothesis testing. You came up with a test. What actually happened was the real reality was that the null hypothesis was true, was true, but because of your test, you ended up rejecting the null. Your decision was reject null. Okay, like for instance, uh, supposing you have the coin as uh, authentic 0.5. Okay, let's say your your acceptance set is that if you got H H H, you're going to decide that the coin is counterfeit. Okay, three tosses H H H coin is counterfeited. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. Now, if you have the authentic coin, right? Actual reality is that you have authentic coin, but you toss three times, you got three three heads. It can happen. In that case, you would have rejected the null hypothesis, and you would have made a type one error. Okay. So these kind of errors are unavoidable. You know, any test, I mean, any distribution, any outcome is actually possible. So you, unavoidable errors, you can only try to minimize them. Okay. So type one error can always happen, and this alpha, which is the significance level, is the probability of a type one error. Okay. So it's the probability, it's the conditional probability that you reject H0 given that H0 is true, okay, given H0, okay, given that the null hypothesis H0 is actually happening, what is the probability you will reject it? It's like a, uh, it's, it's, it's type 1 error uh, is this, can happen. Uh, if you think about it, uh, it's, um, It's it's uh, it's it's something wrong, right? I mean, the, the actual hypothesis was that the null hypothesis was true. It actually happened. You ended up rejecting it. Okay, so it's a negative result, which is actually wrong. Okay, so that's type one error. The other metric is what's called the power of a test. Uh, power is usually one minus beta. Okay, it's not beta. It's one minus beta. Uh, significance level is alpha. Power is one minus beta. I will define beta for you. What is beta? Beta is related to the probability of a type 2 error. What is type 2 error? There is another type of error that can happen, right? When H0 is true, you can reject H0. That is one type of error. The other uh, thing is when HA is true, when the alternative hypothesis is true, you accept H0. Okay? It is a type 2 error. It is sort of like the, the other type of error that you can do. Okay? The null is true, you rejected null. So it's like a false positive or something. You, know, you can say uh, something like that. Now the type two error is when the alternative hypothesis is true, you ended up accepting the null hypothesis. Okay. So this is also an error that you would like to avoid, but you know it's, it's unavoidable. You know you, it can happen in reality that you decide like this, but you have to quantify it. It's very important to quantify it. And this beta is the probability of the type two error. Probability of accepting H0 given that HA is true. Okay? So there is lots of notation here, lots of jargon and lots of terminology, but underlying everything is simple probabilities. Okay? So go back to the simple probabilities. You have two possible theories or hypothesis about the distribution of X. You observe N samples okay? and then you have a test which is based on a set. Right? It is an event. I mean, so you pick a subset of the outcomes and you say for these subsets I am going to accept the null, for the, uh, the complement I am going to reject the null. So now you can start measuring the probabilities of these events. Given that H0 is true, what is the probability you will reject the null hypothesis. Okay, So that is one number which is an error number, I want to keep it low, I want to keep alpha low. The next number is beta which is the type 2 error, the probability of accepting H0 given that the alternative was true. Both of these are possible, these are just sets of outcomes and when depending on the your hypothesis on the distribution, any outcome is possible, so you will have these probabilities. Okay? And you want to control both these numbers, you want to keep it low. Okay? So how would you want to choose your acceptance set? You want to pick an acceptance set so that both numbers are as low as possible. Okay? How do you keep both numbers very low? It is a bit tricky, is not it? If there is only one number and you want to keep it low, just go pick the set which gives you the least possible number. Okay? Now you have two numbers, you want both to be low. How do you go about doing such things? Okay, this is the first time we are meeting a situation like this. So let's start looking at how to uh, come up with uh, you know methods so that you know both alpha and beta can be kept low. Okay, so the power just to be very clear, power is one minus beta, which is you know if you look at it very carefully, it's the probability of rejecting the null given that the alternative is true. Okay, so so you can you can uh, remember 
uh, this in multiple different ways. Uh, it is confusing. Even today, a lot of people get confused with what is what. Uh, type 1 error, type 2 error, alpha, beta is good to remember. Some people like to remember size and power directly. Probability of rejecting the null given that the null is true. Probability of rejecting the null given that the alternate is true. Okay, so you can remember it in many ways, but these are the two important things. Okay, so we have a situation where you have to make a decision between two things. We have a matrix lined up. We have an understanding of what any test will be. Just just the acceptance uh, set is defining the test. Now let's go and look at how this looks for a particular example. So we're going to take this simple example and actually compute alpha beta for every possible. Uh, test that you can come up with, right? So here is this example, this authentic versus counterfeit. I'm going to cost three. I'm going to toss the coin three times. So my set of outcomes is very small. So there are 256 possible tests, right? 256 possible subsets. For every subset, for every test, what is alpha? What is beta? I'm going to try and compute it. So you'll see there will be a trade-off between alpha and beta. Okay. So you can't make both zero, for instance, right? So this is the this is a trade-off between alpha and beta. If, if you go for very low type 1 error, you will go up in type 2 error. If you go for very low type 2 error, you will go up in type 1 error. Okay, some sort of trade-off is there. Okay. Let's begin with the simplest possible test. Okay. I don't accept the null at all. My accept, acceptance set is the null set. Whatever happens, I'm going to reject the null. Okay. So totally you know, excited about the alternative. I, I don't like the null. I don't want the null to be true. I just reject it. Okay. So if you do that, it's quite easy to say you're always rejecting the null. So probability of rejecting the null given null is true is 1. Probability of rejecting the null given, uh, you know, <coughs> probability of accepting the null given alternative is true, which is beta is just 0. Right? So you're never going to accept the null. So, uh, so alpha is 1, beta is 0. Okay, so very easy, right? So given the set A, you can just go ahead and calculate this alpha and beta. Okay, the next alternative is I'm going to take everything to be my acceptance set. Okay, whatever happens, I'm going to accept null. Okay, I don't want the alternative to be true. I'm a traditional sort of guy. I want the null to be true all the time. So I'll simply accept the null. This is also a valid test. Like I said, every subset A gives you a valid test. It's, it's, it's valid, it may not be a great test, but valid test. Okay. So you're always accepting H0. So when you're always accepting X0, what's the probability you'll reject it under any condition is 0, right? And when you're always accepting, what's the probability you'll accept under any condition is always 1. So alpha becomes 0, beta becomes 1. So this is the sort of trade-off I'm talking about. And you can have so many other things intermediate. I may pick a five element set such as this to be my acceptance set, okay? Some set, you can pick any set you like. If you go through and calculate, what is alpha? It's probability that you will reject the null given the null is true. Okay, probability of heads is 0 0.5 given that the coin was authentic. What's the probability of A complement, right? If, 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 if the outcome ends up outside of A, you're going to reject it. There are only two things outside of A. Every possibility is 1 by 8 probability, so it's 2 by 8, 0.25 is alpha. Now, what about beta? Probability of accepting the null given that the uh, the other uh, hypothesis is true, which is more probability of is 0.6. So it's the probability of this set A when the probability of uh, heads is 0.6. So you see there are uh, three cases where there are two heads and one tails. So 3 times 0.4 squared, uh, oh, so, sorry, 3 times 0.6 squared times 0.4, okay? Well, this, is, uh, this is that case. So let me just write that down. Uh, two heads one tail and this is uh, two tail one heads okay three of them three of them so you just do the simple calculation you get 0 0.72 so you see given any set a it's very trivial to calculate alpha and beta okay and you get these different numbers i mean all sorts of numbers right and you you, you see this trade off this 0 0.25 0 0.5 and you can you can sort of easily see that alpha will be either 0 or 1 by 8, or 2 by 8, or 3 by 8, or 4 by 8, or 5 by 8, or 6 by 8, or 7 by 8, or 1, right? Alpha will only take values like that because your sets can be only of that size. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, uh, beta, on the other hand, is high, the probability is 0 0.6. So you have to do some ugly calculation. But you can easily see it will only be a finite set of possible values, okay? So in fact, this problem is so simple uh, 
that you can go ahead and find alpha beta for all 256 possible tests like I have done, okay. So I, I just wrote a small program, it's, it's, you can do it if you, if you have the energy, you can do it. Um, uh, anyway, maybe I should make it an exercise. You should do it and post it on discourse and let people know that you have done this uh, little assignment. Uh, so you can plot alpha on the uh, x-axis beta on the y-axis and each of these x's correspond to different tests, okay. So x corresponds to different choices of choices of A, okay. So you see here alpha is 1, uh, beta is 0, right. So this one will correspond to A equals x3, I think, right. So let us go back and look at that, yeah, uh, or no, A equals null, I am sorry, the, uh, you will all, you will never reject, um, did I get that right? Alpha equals 1, beta equals 0, so this is uh, a equals phi. Uh, this one for instance will be A equals uh, the entire set 3 and uh, the other one that we picked up here 0 0.25, 0 0.72, right. So where will that come? A equals 0 0.25 and 0 0.72, it comes somewhere here, right. And likewise you can do, you know, the other one is 0 0.5, 0 0.352, 0 0.5, 0 0.352, it looks like this guy here. So, so this is the sort of uh, spectrum of all possible alpha and beta, all possible trade-offs. I want to point out a few things to you. Uh, like I said, alpha takes only value, you know, 0, 1 by 8, 2 by 8, like that, right? 2 by 8, 3 by 8. So these are the possible values for alpha. If you fix a particular alpha, it looks like there is a test which gives you the least possible beta, okay? So what are these guys? These guys look interesting, don't they, right? So if you fix a possible alpha, there is this, uh, these red circles which are really, really interesting in some sense, they give you the least possible beta, okay. What is this uh, red circle? Least beta for a fixed alpha. So this seems quite nice. So these red circles is where I would go if, if I really want to pick a set and uh, I have to make a choice for alpha, right? I could choose whatever alpha that I can live with, whatever, whatever probability for type 1 error uh, that I can live with. Once I pick my alpha, the test becomes easy to determine. I just go and find this x uh, where I got the least possible beta for among all the sets that gave me alpha, okay? So this kind of an idea is very interesting and simple. Uh, it turns out it does not work all the time, you have to, you can't do these things all the time, you can't write down all the tests all the time, right? Why, why is that a problem? Because what if we toss uh, 100 times, right? So for 3 times you are able to do all this, if you toss 100 times you will have 2 power 100 possibilities, there is no way I can write it down like this and go ahead and search, that is number 1. The other problem is this was coin toss, just 0 or 1, head or tails, you could write down numerically. What about uh, other distributions if you do normal, for instance 100 normal samples? Where will you go writing up, you know, all possible things in 100 dimensional space and, you know, finding out subsets? You can't do this. This is not practical at all. But at least in theory, these kind of things are very nice to understand. So this, this kind of principle will show up a lot in hypothesis testing. You will pick your significance level first, okay? What is that? Alpha, right? Probability of type 1 error. You will pick a suitably low value for your significance level, okay? And then hope that you have sufficient power as high a power as possible. What is power? Once again, it's 1 minus beta, right, which is as low a type 2 error as possible, okay. So this kind of a philosophy in design, you will see, actually works throughout hypothesis testing, okay. Okay, so this leads us to a general model or paradigm for hypothesis testing, which is named famously after Neyman and Pearson, who popularized this model. There's a rich story behind these things. I would urge you to read the story of Neyman and Pearson and uh, Robert Fisher. Uh, there's a very nice book called uh, Lady Tasting Tea, okay. It's a story about uh, how statistics uh, made a lot of changes uh, in the turn of the previous century, okay. So I will urge you to read it. It's, it's a nice story about how Neyman and Pearson's method today is widely accepted in hypothesis testing, okay. Let me repeat the setting once again. We've already seen the setting. I will repeat it once again for consolidation. You have n samples from some distribution x. There is, there are two hypotheses about the distribution of x, h0 and hj. 
this is a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Generally, you expect the null hypothesis to be true, but alternative is what you are testing against. Okay? Any test is defi defined properly by an acceptance set A. Okay? So, this is the subset of all uh, possible samples that you may have, all possible outcomes you may have. And your rule is, if, if the samples actually fall inside my acceptance set, I will accept the null. Otherwise, I will reject the null. There are two types of errors that can happen here. Supposing the null is true, you may end up rejecting it. That is type 1 error. Supposing the alternative is true, you may still end up accepting the null. That is type 2 error. Uh, significance level alpha is the probability of type 1 error. Uh, beta is the probability of type 2 error. And 1 minus beta is called the power. Significance level is also called the size. Okay? And general theory of design seems to be that you fix your significance level and go looking for the test which will give you a small enough beta. Okay? That seems like a reasonable way to do optimizing two different variables with one choice. Okay, so that is the uh, conclusion of uh, this lecture. In the next lecture, we will see a few problems on this kind of test. I will define a test for you and uh, we will see how to compute significance level, power of the test and so on. Okay, thank you very much.